know you play to win the game. You don't play to just play it. What's that? Uh, playoffs? Don't talk about playoffs. You kidding me? Playoffs? I just hope we can win a game. Get out there, play hard, enjoy those games. Welcome in to Go Big or Go Home. I'm old man Troy, joined by the marvelous youngster Kevin Cunningham, a.k.a. Kid Cunny on Twitter, recording today on the Inner Peak Coffee studio line. What's going on today, my friend? Not too much. Not too much. Uh, I, I thought I had something to share um, as far as a little lead into the the podcast today, but... Now I don't remember it, so, you know, <laughs> I've got nothing. Um, when you turn what 30, you? you start forgetting stuff. Yes, yes, I'll blame it on that. That's right. <laughs> what about you, old man? Another day at the office, literally. Another full day at the office, almost two days of being at the office in one day. 14 hours today, got to love that one. It's all good. It's all good, ready to rock and roll, have a little Big Ten show, even though there's literally no Big Ten sports to talk about. But we do have a good topic yeah. today. I I was thinking about that, um, and I'm sure we're missing something, but I don't know what sports are going on right now. I literally don't, as far as collegiate sports. I, I've watched some of the, the Euro competition for soccer today, Troy. Um, and I'm excited tomorrow. I have a day off, and tomorrow is France, Germany, and Portugal plays before that game, so I can watch a little Ronaldo. It, it'll be. I, I'm very excited for tomorrow. But yep. that's not uh, what this show is about. <laughs> this no, show this is about Big the, Ten. Uh, yeah. College, college sports, not not Euro soccer. Oh, darn it! <laughs> we did a show uh, once on soccer. We all yeah. ever did. If people want to find that, just go to Google. <laughs> Literally go to Google and type in Soccer Savvy. You will find the episodes on Blog Talk Radio. You should try it, youngster. Go into Google, type it, I do it Googled, while we're on the show. Yeah, I just, I literally just Googled Soccer Savvy. That's, there's too many, like, like there's a brand of a soccer ball that I guess called Savvy. I didn't find it on the first. I- let me tell, like, soccer Type in savvy soccer, savvy bl- soccer Savvy Blog Talk Radio. See what comes up. Bingo. I'm surprised. I just did Soccer Savvy Podcast, and I'm surprised. Hmm. I'm surprised that didn't do it. But Blog Talk Radio, I'm sure, would get it done. Yeah, yeah, blog we're not continuing this show... Till you, till you actually can pull up an old episode. <laughs> this is kind of sad. This is almost embarrassing at this point. Come Not on, young up there. I, oh, I'm going to go home and I'm going to find it. I'm going to screenshot it to you. Nah. <laughs> I'm not looking crazy it, hard, but I'm, I'm surprised. It's there. Yeah. I'll, I'll screenshot it to you just to prove to you that it's on the Internet. All right. Yeah. Maybe you're not spelling savvy right. Two Vs. Should be. Yeah. I don't know. Weird. All right, let's talk about the college anyway. football playoff. Nobody cares yeah. about our search for our old podcast. No. Um, so – that's basically the news of collegiate sports in general, not just Big Ten, but because, again, I, I literally don't know what other sports are going on. Um, but that, that's really the name of it, um, is this college football playoff. Last week we talked about, like, the first report coming out that, like, hey, this is, you know, starting to gain steam, and people think if there's going to be an expansion, it's going to be with 12 teams. Um, and so – it's like becoming not official, but as close to official as possible. Um, this is, let's see here, the college football playoff has like an official proposal basically ready to go. Um, these, 
the proposal has to be, yeah, it's scheduled for a meeting in June 17th to 18th. We're doing the show on uh, Monday, June 14th. <clears throat> courtesy of the Inner Peak Coffee Virtual Studio Line. Shout out to Inner Peak Coffee. Check out innerpeakcoffee.com for free shipping on all orders straight to your doorstep. Um, but So we're doing this show on Monday the 14th, so later this week, Thursday, Friday, there's this meeting going on where the college football playoff will be discussed. So for next week's show, I'm sure we'll have more on it. But basically the 2023 season is when this would really start to get its earliest chance at actually happening, uh, which means another two seasons at least of this four-team playoff, which it really, to me, and maybe I'm overanalyzing it, but to me it's become Alabama Clemson, probably Ohio State, and then someone else. And that someone else is usually Oklahoma, LSU, I, <laughs> There's not too many more other options. Oregon, if they have a really good team, um, yeah. So I mean, it, it's that's what it seems like. That's what it feels like to me um, as a college football fan, an Ohio State fan. Um, you know, I we obviously do a Big Ten show here. I can, <laughs> I'm certainly no Ohio State homer, um, but that, that's what it feels like. Yeah, to you me are as Alabama. <laughs> Alabama, Clemson are in there every single year. Ohio State's in there. It seems like 75% of the time. And then it seems like Oklahoma's the next uh, team to get in there more often than anyone else. But, again, that's just me not really doing any homework and thinking about it too hard. But that, that's just what it feels like to me. Um, in any case, so this 12-team expansion, how it would work is just straight up the top 12 teams, but not exactly – um, it would be the top five, realistically six, uh, top six conference highest rated, highest rated top six conference teams. Um, so you have your winner of the Big Ten, you have your winner of the SEC, you have the winner of the ACC, Big 12, Pac-12, and then that sixth conference, so you have the Power Five winners, which, you know, that makes sense. The sixth is just the highest ranked, at least as far as I remember reading. I don't have the exact article up in front of my face right now. At the second, I will find it. But that's that's what um, that's what it would be. Is that sixth automatic spot would be to whoever the highest ranked group of five uh, conference winner would be, which I think is cool. Um, and then there would be six at-large bids. So. Again, those six at-large bids would just go right down the line in terms of whatever the rankings are. Uh, so there will be massive debate as far as teams 13, teams 18. I mean, what this really does is, and we talked about this um, during the baseball season on our other show that we do, Troy, this past year, um, when baseball expanded its field, basically doubling it, um, that you had teams around 500 truly interested in what was happening in games like two weeks to go in the regular season. And usually you don't. Usually you have your three powerhouse teams and then your one ridiculously gaudy record wild card team. Um, and they've changed that to two to have a one game play in uh, the last few years. But regardless, it's if you're an average or below baseball team, you're not into the regular season with two weeks left. And in baseball, it's different because two weeks left, that's only, you know, 12 games out of the 162. But for college football, to get into the top 13, 14, 15 teams, if you're team 20 and you pull an upset, it's possible to go from 20 to 12 and sneak in there. Like, that's, that's possible. Uh, you see teams make an eight-ranking jump every week. There's always one team who pulls off a big win and goes from 20 to to 12, from 15 to 7, uh, from unranked to 17. Um, So it's it's possible to do that. Um, I think it makes the regular season more interesting at the end. Um, But for you, Troy, do you think this – this format, if it does go through, the six highest-ranked conference champions and then six at-large bids after that, do you think that increases the relevance of the sport 
um, in terms of its regular season down the stretch? I guess because you're looking if you, if it's based totally on ranking. Yes. But again, the the small guy is going to be left out. Isn't that why there was a debate about the college football playoff? Is to get that uh, you know David versus Goliath team in there. That well, partial you're team. You're automatically getting one. I guess so. That's you know you're getting one. I thought me. it was. A, it's Power Five, right? The Power Five conferences. The Power Five get one. Um, the, the highest ranked Power Five conference champions are automatically in, and then also the highest ranked team outside of those Power Five conferences automatically gets in. So you're automatically including one. So you got six teams. Uh, I don't know if it makes the regular season any different for me, youngster. I mean, it's going to come down. You're going to have your – you've got your Big Ten. You've got your SEC. I mean, you want to say the ACC, but is anybody even close to Clemson in the ACC? I mean, I I, I lived in Pittsburgh for a long time. Is Pittsburgh yeah. a, a competitor to Clemson, North Carolina, Wake Forest? I mean, if Notre Dame would decide what they want to do, so how does Notre Dame figure into this? They're going to be an at-large bid, so that they're going to be a seventh seed. So Troy, that was the other point I wanted to get to. We'll hit on that in a few minutes. Um, that was the only major, the other major talk, talking point I wanted to get to. Um, but for me, this this makes <laughs> what this actually does for me. Um, come conference championship weekend, it makes those games. <laughs> more interesting in the sense that, say, Wisconsin's playing Ohio State and Ohio State's favored by nine and a half, you, there is a true interest in, oh, my God, Wisconsin, don't lose by 30. If you lose by 14 and you keep it close until six minutes left in the fourth quarter, you may fall from 10 or you may fall from 8 to 12 instead of having it be no difference because you're just losing and that's it. If you can keep it close against Ohio State, if you can keep it close against Alabama, if you can keep it close against Clemson, like... Human bias will still take part, whether it's four teams or 12 teams. Yeah. But what I'm saying is it pays to lose to Ohio State by six in the Big Ten Championship because it keeps you alive for the 12-team playoffs. You don't want to get blown Maybe. Maybe not sold on that human bias why why is oklahoma why i mean they're good teams but when the preseason poll comes out how many of those teams are going to be outside the top five i mean again i'm not a big preseason ranking fan i just i don't i don't i've never and you know i'm not just saying this off the cuff today you know how much stock i put in the polls youngster how much right. stock? Tell the, tell the non-loyal listeners that haven't listened for six years, maybe their first time on the Inner Peak Coffee studio line, listening to an old man that they think is just a grumpy guy. But tell those people how much I care about the AP poll. No, and you don't care at all, as you shouldn't, because what matters <clears throat> is when the college football playoff rankings first come out, that's when it actually matters. And then you've got like a month worth of time, a.k.a. like four of the rankings before the final rankings come out, and that's going to be the official, you know, like just because the AP says Duke is a two seed, <clears throat> uh, going into March Madness doesn't mean anything. What matters is the selection committee because they actually make the bracket. Like the college football playoff rankings, that means something. The AP rankings mean nothing. That's just the Associated Press coming up with their own rankings. So uh, that's just a number next to teams' names up until the college football playoff rankings come out. But yeah, especially you know, preseason rankings it means nothing. I'm just, I'm just saying, though, youngster, they rank the teams, and if Wisconsin is number 10, and they lose by seven or they lose by 17, but there's a team at 13 that has the same record and they win, what, what's going to 
I mean, the value of that game, if they're not a Wisconsin fan, they're going to say, well, Wisconsin lost. And then Team 13 won, so Wisconsin's out. It's it. The, the rankings, to me, whenever you have rankings, youngster, it comes down to what that person thinks. And we've talked about it over and over. None of these committee members are watching every game across the country all year. They're looking at box scores. Yeah. You know what you get a lot of um, come conference championship weekend is these teams, like, say, Wisconsin. We just keep using Wisconsin as an example. If Ohio State's ranked second, uh, Wisconsin's 10th, Wisconsin loses by 10 points in the championship game, then what about team number 13 who doesn't play because they didn't make <clears throat> the Big Ten championship, they didn't make the Big 12 championship, they didn't make the SEC championship? Like, <laughs> how much do you penalize Wisconsin for losing by 10 if Georgia, if Texas A&M sitting at number 13 didn't make the SEC championship game, they didn't even play, do you stick Texas A&M ahead of a team that played and lost to Ohio State? I mean, that's, those are going to be the conversations we would you know how have. You know how you solve that, what you just brought up? I've been saying it for five years. Conference semifinals, conference finals. Yeah. Not a championship game. If you right. do that, so and, and I and I'm not trying to like elate what we've been talking about for five years, but think about it, youngster. What you just said, you're going to take the top twelve teams potentially in the country, right? I guarantee in the Power Five, if you have a semifinal in each of those conferences, you're going to take up about. Well, five times four is 20. What? Probably the whole top 12. You're going to have some other teams in there. But most of the teams in the top 15 will then be playing in some kind of tournament to see what their worth is to get into the playoff. Agree or disagree with that? No, yeah, absolutely. I think it would be fantastic. (laughs) I mean, again, we've been talking about this. You were the first one to bring it up, but, yeah, we've been talking about this for years and how great it would be, and especially with a 12-team playoff, it would be even more interesting because it's truly – it would it would truly be a playoff ahead. leading into the playoff is what it would be. And it would give those teams that maybe are ranked 18th, a Northwestern. Right. You know, a Northwestern or – Michigan State on an up year is, you know, ranked 17th, and they fit, you know, they pull an upset, they jumped ahead of Penn State and Michigan, and, wow, they're second place. Because they've done it. They've been there before. Right. Yep. You know, so all of a sudden you got that team, but they didn't make the conference championship, so now they're sitting at 17, but they beat Penn State and they beat Michigan in back-to-back weeks to get number two in the conference, and now they're sure. shit out of luck. Yeah. I mean, that, that's where I'm going. And, I, I mean, I'm not sitting here trying to keep patting ourselves on the back, but why is the NCAA and why are these conferences not wanting to do that? One is revenue. We've talked about being right. greedy. I am the first to say the NCAA is one of the greediest organizations in the world. Why wouldn't you want to pack Camp Randall two times or one other time before you go to Indianapolis? Right. Why wouldn't you want to pack Kinnick Stadium one more time or Beaver Stadium one more time? Think about how much money you could make. And if it all comes down to that, it's not about the student athlete. We know that. They say it is, but it's really not. (laughs) So if you're going to move to the 12-team playoff, I really would love to start seeing conference semifinals. Most of these conferences, youngster, have two divisions. We've already talked about how you do this. One from the west, one, one from the west, plays two from the east, 
one from the East, play two from the West, bam, then you have a championship. One extra week, and we've talked about the downtime between the conference championships and the bowl season. You're not, you're, you're not going to interrupt a college football player's life adding one more week of games. No. Sorry. Now, the playoff might do that because now you're talking January and you're talking more weeks, blah, blah, blah. But, again, let's be real. I know I air quote student athletes. That is nothing but a mirage. Really, it is. It went, at that level, it is a mirage. Now, a lot of these players are never playing in the NFL. They're getting a good education. But I'll use this as an example. And you know what? The COVID-19 pandemic seems like we're slowly getting out of it back to normal, right? How did these kids study during the pandemic? They studied online. Why can't yeah. college football players that play Division One football at these schools have an exception when they're playing these extra games that they are allowed to be online doing their work? Just saying. Just saying. I was just trying to prove a point. That the naysayers about expanding the playoff and the the season is because of academics and they're going to struggle. The ones that are going to struggle are going to struggle. The guys that are good in academics are going to still be good. That's all I'm going to say. I played athletics, youngster. I had road trips. Guess what? Teachers knew, here's your homework. This is what you're going to miss. You're not going to be penalized. This is when it's got to be turned in. We didn't have, we didn't have Internet when I went to college. We, had, we actually had backpacks, and we took books to class with three ring binders and notebooks and pencils and pens. I did that, that That's how it was. <laughs> we take laptops, too, sometimes, though. <laughs> I had no laptop to take the psychology yeah. class. No, yeah. <laughs> I had number two pencils, a notebook, and a hard-covered book that I actually had to turn the pages on. Did you have any of those pen things they use nowadays, for? What do you mean, pen things? <laughs> <laughs> or did you only have number two pencils? Or did you have pens? No, I had pens. Oh, I had pens. I wasn't sure how far back, see. You are an old man, so I had to confirm pens were but still. All of, you, you remember taking the ACT and the SAT, youngster, right? You, I mean, that's, what, yeah. 12 years ago. And you had to have bring number two pencils, and you had to Correct. fill the little circles in. That's yep. how all of my tests were at Whitewater. <laughs> you didn't Not just an SAT board. or an ACT. There's nothing on a computer. Everything was... Yeah. Buy that because they ran it through. They thought that was the biggest thing in the world. Woo! Look at that! Woo! Gone. Good. Wonder how many mess we ups. That. Uh, how many mess ups? How many screw ups there were um, when the Scantron stuff like first came out? <clears throat> I wonder how many. Oh, uh, there, there were a lot. There were a lot. Oh, I'm sure. I remember getting a psychology test back, and right. the grades came back, and the grades were on the top, and then the professor on the. Uh, on an actual chalkboard. This is an actual chalkboard. Not a dry erase board, not a virtual board, a chalkboard with actual chalk. Wrote down, if you, he had a question number one, whatever question it was that was wrong, and said, if you answered this, add two points to your score. So then we had to add it up and bring it up, and he verified it, and then we got a higher grade. Oh, there's a lot. Woo! Good old University of Wisconsin Whitewater. Woo! <laughs> All right, uh, we got off on we got off on a tree limb there. All right, back yeah. to the playoffs. The other point I wanted to make on today's show, and then we'll let the listeners go, uh, is you brought it up before Notre Dame. Um, they're not in a conference, and as it is, this proposal states that the 
highest four ranked conference champions get buys. So if you're Oregon and you're ranked 10th and you win the Pac-12, if you're Nebraska, Nebraska, that's pretty sad. If you're Baylor and you win the Big 12 um, and you're ranked 16th, 16th, excuse me, then Oregon is the number 10 team in the country would get a buy. You would be seated. You'd be seated fourth if you're the fourth highest team because Baylor won the Pac-12 or the Big 12 tournament, Big 12 championship. I can't talk right now. The Big 12 championship, and they were ranked 16th. Um, so Oregon would get that fourth buy. Um, that's how it would go. Is the top four ranked conference champions get buys? AKA, if you're Notre Dame and you're not in a conference. This is, this is my point here, is that Notre Dame will not receive a buy. They will not be eligible for a buy unless you're in a conference. Now, in 2020, they, quote-unquote, joined the ACC for one season. They're not, 2021, they're not affiliated with the ACC. Um, come bowl season, maybe, you know, that's, I don't know if they get a spot there. I don't understand how Notre Dame does their business with the ACC in terms of football and bowl selection, but... Understand this, youngster. Notre Dame does their business with ABC. Yeah, I, no, I know that. NBC. NBC. Is it, is it uh, NBC? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't NBC. watch them. I don't right. watch Notre Dame. Right. Um, but so, yeah, Notre I watch Dame. the Big Ten Network. I watch the Big Ten Network. So there you go. Big Ten Network. Do you want to sponsor our podcast or just let us be on the network? We love you guys. Youngster, you watch the Big Ten Network on your laptop. I watch it on the TV. Yeah. Yeah, down here in Florida, unfortunately, I do not get it on my TV. Although, if I stick a plug from my computer to my TV, I can watch Big Ten on my TV. Exactly. uh, So, going back to Notre Dame, they cannot get a buy. So, that's fantastic. Fantastic news, isn't it, Troy? No buy for Notre Dame. Why? Because they're not in a conference. That's awesome. So they they get hurt by not being in a conference. This is the first time ever in my memory that you get hurt by not being in a conference. And you get the little fiddle fingers. You know when you rub your thumb and pointer finger together and then you do the little fiddle thing? That's what I'm (laughs) doing right now for Notre Dame. (laughs) Too bad. Too bad. Join a conference. There you go. There is a reason Notre Dame would want to join a conference. Um, And it's not just Notre Dame. There's a few other independents out there. But Notre Dame gets the most notoriety because of who they are, the solo deal with NBC. They're the best independent uh, football program, as far as I know, consistently. (laughs) Uh, Well, you you, you really think about it, though, youngster, and you talk about independence. It's hard to be independent. Yeah. When you're not in a conference – and you're missing you out on all that conference revenue. revenue. Right. I mean, that that's – a lot of these schools can't operate like that. It's hard enough operating when you do get conference revenue. Right. If you're, not, if you're a mediocre team, I mean, you, you've got – I mean, you're not going to get the revenue. Notre Dame is going to get the booster revenue – you know, how many players have went to the NFL? How many of those are given back to the school? They can afford yeah. all of this. They can afford to not be in a conference. Yeah. But then you look at it, the thing, and for the loyal listeners, I know I'm beating the drum. You've heard this for many, many years, listening to the old man. They, they got to pick a conference. Why does Notre Dame get to just go, I'm going to play in this conference, I'm going to play in this conference with this sport and this sport. I'm going to play Big Ten hockey, but I'm going to play ACC basketball. Come on! As always, as always, it's because of money. They can exactly. do it because of money. Right. So maybe somebody should just kick them in the kahunas. Say, here you go. And maybe that's what, maybe that's what they're doing with the playoff. Like, here maybe. you go. Figure it out. It's 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 a part of it, um, for sure. I, I think that 
they wanted to make conference championship weekend more enticing um, by giving automatic bids there. Um, and I think that by giving an automatic bid <clears throat> to the top six conference winners, a.k.a. the Power Five plus one, you know, that obviously adds intrigue by having, you know, whoever the best group of five team is, that you're automatically in. You don't get a buy, but you're automatically in. I don't know if that team, like, say, the highest ranked group of five team is, say they would come in sixth. They're not ranked sixth in the country, but they would come in sixth in terms of the teams that win their conferences in terms of rankings. Like, say they finish 14th um, and they win the MAC, and that's the highest rated group of five team conference champion. Do they get the six seed? Or it might be lower than 14 if it's from the MAC, though. Could be. What if it's a down yeah. year in the MAC? I mean, you look at the MAC. I mean, that that's not yeah. like a dominating Big Ten where you got an Ohio State, a Penn State. I, I'm usually, not even going to throw Wisconsin. But usually they do have the the champion is usually up near the top ten, right? Well, what happens in a down year? What happens when teams have two losses on both sides of that conference? There's no MAC team with two losses ranked in the top 15. Not happening. Well, they're they're just straight up not going to make the playoff. I mean, because there's always one with you're either undefeated or you've got one loss like to Oklahoma by 10 points at the start of the year. There's always one team who's ranked. But that that's kind of my question, I guess. I don't know. Is do they get the number 6 seed in this proposed playoff or do they get the 12 seed because they're ranked behind the top 12 teams i i guess that's my question but again it's gonna it's gonna come down to i like it i like that there's an extended playoff i do i really do but my problem again with this is a lot of human bias when you start going and saying okay you got the automatic bids here blah 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 and then we're gonna take six random teams all right so guess what? The year that Wisconsin upsets Ohio State in the Big Ten Championship. There you go. Oop. That's automatic. Even though that would be, let's say Ohio State lost. Well, again, it, this is where the intrigue comes in, youngster. Let's be yeah. real. You, this is a Big Ten show. Ohio State, Penn State. Would that not be cool on championship weekend to see both of those teams have a chance? And then you go to the other side. You got Wisconsin, Iowa every, what, three years is going to be up there. Minnesota makes a run. Every three years. Yeah. You know, Wisconsin has pretty much put their foot down like, hey, we're going to be near the top. Paul Chris has done a good job. Being a Wisconsin homer on that one. But really, how do you not have Wisconsin in one of your top two on that side of the division? Yeah, But you look at the other side, and now you've got Penn State, Michigan, Ohio State. Only one of them can play in the Big Ten Championship. And it might be a year where Penn State and Ohio State are both 11-0, and playing the final week. One of them's going to lose. But, man, now I'm screwed out of a chance. Well, they would probably still go with the automatic bid. But what kind of intrigue would that be for Wisconsin to have to play a Penn State? Right. And say, okay, Wisconsin, are you really good enough at this point to go into the, the playoffs? So it also man. it also allows the ridiculous notion that Penn State and Ohio State can't compete in the Big Ten title game together just because divisions were aligned that way. Like it allows the second best team to truly shine through and show that they're the second best team, or potentially. Yes, yeah, so you could. You could, at it with our suggestion, and let's use what we just did. Let's say it's Wisconsin, Minnesota, Ohio State, Penn State. Ohio State, Minnesota. Ohio State wins. Wisconsin, Penn State. Penn State. Wow, look at that. Ohio State versus Penn State. Big Ten Championship. Right. Rematch right. from three weeks ago. How cool would ratings, that be? You know the ratings that Ohio State, Michigan would get <laughs> if they had to play a second time? 
if Michigan actually like got good at the sport again? It'd be fantastic well, in terms of ratings, you, you in terms didn't of have revenue. To, you did not have to kick the Wolverines in the nuts right oh, there, youngster. Oh, so I'm sorry. My I, gosh. I didn't mean to do that. I'm sorry. I, <laughs> Bam! Just sorry. like that. Good swift way, kick in the nutties <laughs> to the Wolverine <laughs> fan base. And now we just lost all of our Michigan fans that listen in on the Inner <laughs> Peak Coffee studio line. They're gone. You know, what, what, they're, what they're doing is they're yelling and they're trying to look me up on Twitter and cursing me out on Twitter. That, that's what they're doing. Which, that's fine. Huh. That, that's okay. Understandable. But wow. anyway, follow us on Twitter. Follow us on Twitter at YoungStrollMen if you're a Michigan fan and you hate me now. But, you know, you could have before. But maybe that was the last straw. Um, Michigan is clearly a basketball school right now. Like, their football program is, to me, it's below average. You can look at NFL prospects um, and go off that and recruiting rankings, but if you look at, like, results, I mean, they're, they're, they're losing to Rutgers. They're losing by 30 to Wisconsin. Like, they're getting killed by good teams in the Big Ten. They're getting annihilated. It's a joke. That's what was happening last year. It was a joke to watch Michigan play Wisconsin. So I, you know, not when I watched, I loved it. <laughs> I, I'm sure you did. I, at first, I loved it as an Ohio State fan. When Ohio State, all right. Like, so, 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 those few Michigan fans that are still listening in after the youngster kicked you in the nuts, then the old man just says, "I love that annihilation." Yep, we've right. lost every Michigan Wolverine uh-huh. fan on this show. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, Anyway, so Notre Dame uh, gets, to use your terminology, a swift kick um, in this proposed proposal, um, anticipated proposal. Um, again, on next week's show, <clears throat> excuse me, on next week's show, we should be able to share more information about what is going on with this college football playoff proposal expansion from four to twelve. Um, the meeting will be held later this week on Thursday and Friday on the 17th and 18th of June. So next week we'll be able to fill you in more on that. But, yeah, it might be more playoff talk for a third straight week. Um, I'm going I to think, honestly, youngster, I think it's going to be playoff talk until they start, you know, fall practice. There's really nothing yeah. else going on. So I do want to do this today on the show, and I know, heck, we went a good, uh, what, 40, 40 some minutes. Almost 40 minutes. So I, w- I do want to do this for our sponsor. We always talk about the Inner Peak Coffee Studio line. Just want to spend a couple minutes just talking them up here at the end of the show. People need to go to innerpeakcoffee.com. Check it out. It's not only coffee. There's camping gear because the owner, Shane Wershinsky, is a big camping outdoor guy. I follow him on all the social media sites, as does our show. And they're always outdoors. Him and his wife built the company. They love the outdoors. So they wanted to have, basically bring coffee on the run. So if you go to innerpeakcoffee.com, if you're a camper or you're an outdoor person, they have so much other availability, not just coffee. They got coffee makers. They got different things for camping. They've got apparel. They've got a ton of things on the website. And it's just, they've it's got, amazing. I'm, Go ahead. I'm looking at it now, Troy. They've got coffee. They've got hoodies. They've got uh, ra- racerback tank tops. They've got tumblers, a.k.a. like little mugs. Um, they've got regular T-shirts. There's some more hoodies. There's plenty of shirts for women, for men. A lot of different kind of mugs. The mugs actually look pretty cool. I've never really looked they at are. them all before, but they look cool. I'm not a coffee drinker, but they actually have a, a funny mug as well. They've got a Christmas. Well, that's pretty – that's festive right there. If you want a, an easy Christmas gift, it's a cheap mug. Again, free shipping. Cheap mug. Christmas well, I don't, I don't know if the, I don't know if the, uh, the mugs and hoodies are free. The coffee's free. I don't, I don't think – I 
Let's not quote on the free shipping on that. I don't know. Um, I don't no, know okay. if that's free. Yet. Sorry. My apologies. But yeah. So uh, th- there's there's a lot of different stuff. There's also if again just go to innerpeakcoffee.com. Um, there's a taste quiz. Interesting. Yeah, it is for coffee drinkers because you might not know like what you're. Because I took it, I, I did. Because you know I drink a lot of coffee. It, it, you don't know like well what kind of blend blend do I want? You could you go in there and they actually ask you questions and then they give yeah. you recommend recommendations on what coffee would be a good idea. But go back to it, quiz. youngster. Troy. Troy, I just took the quiz. It took me less than one minute. <laughs> yep, so, and what and kind of coffee? Sh- exactly. Jano, mocha, Bali Blue, Indonesian. Interesting. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, Bali There's Blue. More, more suggestions. Six suggestions. French roast, hazelnut, turtle. Look at this. Well, I like the Bali Six Blue suggestions. because I still go back to that day that you sounded depressed. Bali <laughs> Blue probably suits you. Who's <laughs> the best? Probably. Uh, my my father-in-law came into town the other weekend, and he was drinking some more Inner Peak coffee. So it's still yes. being drank in, in my household. Because I know I know that Mama Cunningham, she's ordered Inner Peak. I know Mrs. Cunt, or I guess what I call her, Mrs. Youngster, has ordered. Yeah. She's ordered Inner Peak coffee, and yep. just I wanted to give. I wanted to give a few minutes at the end of the show because we're always doing our show and we're always looking at the time and we can't give Interpeak enough shout out and love for being our sponsor because they sponsor every show that we do. Like every show, they're our sponsor. And we do our show on Elevation Sports out in Denver. We're on K-Mix 96.7. We're also on WLDJ. They sponsor every single one of our shows. And we can't give enough love to them for what they do. And, you know, a little soft spot, of, soft spot in my heart, youngster. They're from Wisconsin. Hey. So I wanted to throw that out. But go check them out, folks, interpeakcoffee.com. Check it out, even if you're not a coffee drinker. Like the youngster said, I mean, we're, we're, I know we're in summer, but if you need a Christmas gift, People, everybody loves tumblers. Everybody loves hoodies. I know you and I both do, youngster. That 50, 60 degree weather, put a hoodie on, bam. There you go. So it's not only coffee. All right, youngster. Again, thank you to Interpeak Coffee. What else you got? Otherwise, we can let them go. That's all from me. That's all I have. All righty. Hope you enjoyed the show today, everybody. For the youngster, I'm the old man. We'll get back at you next week. Same place, same time. Have a good week.